Why are y'all here? Why are you here? Why are you sitting here right now? Think about it. Why are you here? Why did you decide to come over here? Why did you decide to get up from your warm bed, come over here in the cold rain, and then try to set up and then, you know, <coughs> play music or sing or prepare or even want to come up and hear what God has for you to say why? What I wanted to talk about today was about bringing God back to the home. And a lot of times you're going to hear, you hear this voice, this uh, verse in uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, I will, we will serve the Lord. And I remember giving uh, a couple years ago or last year, my brother, they gave him a plaque and made it out of wood. And I put those, that scripture on there and I carved it in there and I gave it to them. And it wasn't that, you know, we didn't want to go and buy them. And it was, it was, it became more of a meaning, you know, because this has been a long journey for us in the last few years. Personally, for, my, for me and my family, you know, We've lost some family members along the way in the last couple of years, and it's been very hard for our family, even though sometimes we may not show it, you know. But if you're with us day in and day out, and you know each of us, and you know, you'll, you'll see that some things we lean towards doing than other things. And those are choices that we're making, you know. And sometimes we have to force ourselves to get out of that funk. I don't know, I mean, you can see I cut my hair, you know, trimmed the beard, sure. and and I, I, uh, I had grown my hair all year, for a year, actually a little more than a year. And it got to a point to where it was kind of like above the shoulder, but within the last month, uh, the last end of the summer until now, it just like boomed and grew. And then it was, I was able to put in a bun and all that stuff, you know? which was kind of a supernatural kind of thing because, you know, hair doesn't grow that fast, you know. But I remember talking to Tanya one day uh, before Thanksgiving and she was like, you know, and I would ask her, I'm like, do you think I should cut my hair? And she's like, I don't know. No, she'd be like, no, it looks good. And then after a while I was kind of like, yeah, maybe you should cut your hair. And I said, okay. <laughs> And she's like, you know, do it in the new year, you know, new year, new you. And I remember uh, I had to take Gabriel to get a haircut. And I remember that morning waking up because she had class that Saturday. And I just, and I looked in the mirror and I said, you know what? Uh, this is who I am right here. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, man. And a vision came to my mind where, uh, uh, have you seen that, um, the story of David, that movie, the story of David, and he, that man, the David is told about his son, and he falls to the ground because his son had uh, was killed, and he falls to the ground and he tears his shirt <coughs> and he throws dirt over him, over his head as it's his mourning. He's mourning his loss of his son, and, and um, people don't realize that he was mourning the loss of Absalom. You know, the one son that tried to overthrow him. <laughs> but he mourned him. And he was scorned by it. He was scorned for it. And people don't realize that. And I just wanted to share that. But I looked in the mirror and I saw that. I saw that vision. So when I went to go take Gabriel to get a haircut, I was like, going, I'm going to go cut it. And the lady was like, are you sure? You know, like... All of it? And I was like, yeah, cut it off. It ain't the first time I've cut my hair grow long. But this time, it had meaning because I allowed myself to fall into this, you know, depth that's below what the standard I held for myself or the standard that God has set for me, and I use that, you know. And I'm not saying anything against long hair or anything like that. It's just, all right. It's just, uh, you know, for who I am and who I've been all these years, 
I allow myself to fall into hearing what the enemy has told me, you know? And it wasn't that I was doing bad things or doing wrong. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, what I was called to do, you know? I allowed myself to just be blown in the wind and go along with whatever is going on. And I didn't stand, you know, mentally and physically and spiritually for what God had set up for me. And throughout my life, I always had that standard, you know, I always set that self, that bar for myself. And, and it, and the, where I learned that was from my dad, you know, I learned that you, you have to set the standard for yourself. <coughs> and then when I found Christ, that even amplified that because it took my spiritual life into a, another realm. And I remember talking, uh, we were talking about having communion today and I was inviting some friends and they're Catholic and the kids are, you know, they're going through the communion and, and I'm kind of like, you know what, they can have communion here. I mean, it's whatever. And I had to, and she kind of like, you're going to have to explain to them. And I said, that's fine. And, and they weren't able to make it today because they're at the other church. But the thing about it is, is that um, I remember telling Tanya, like when I had gone through my sacraments, right, we had to go, we learned about it. And then you go and you give confession to the priest and things like that. And I remember I telling Tanya, and I tell everybody this, is that I sat there in confession thinking to myself, why am I talking to this guy? He's got nothing. He's not going to help me. He's not going to take my sin and wash it away. You know? It's just, I'm just giving him what I've done, you know, and he's going to take it up. And what do I do? I do nothing. He said, do, okay, let's do three Hail Marys and four Her Fathers. <laughs> you know? But nowhere in that line did I say, God, <coughs> your son had died for me, and he washed away my sin because of it. And I am cleansed. Nowhere in that confession are you going to get that, you know. And I'm not saying that Catholicism is wrong. I'm not saying that. It. But I'm saying is, at that age, I knew that the standard was set higher. And there was, if there was somebody else that could take it away, that's who I wanted to talk to. I didn't want to talk to somebody else who was going to take it. And maybe it's going to happen. You know, Maybe he'll get the time to pray about it. I didn't want to put my life in someone else's hands. You know? And, and so I, I think about this scripture, and, and I was remembering today, and I was talking to the kids, because you can see the kids, they have, the boys, they have their ties on and stuff like that. And, and, and I told him, I was like, we gotta, I've been telling him, we're going to change the way we do things. We have to start setting standards for ourselves, you know. And the one thing that, one thing I remember is, is from that movie, Remember the Titan, when Coach Boone had separated, segregated the kids and took them to a college to train. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said, we're going to change the way we eat. We're going to change the way we walk, we're going to change the way we tackle, we're going to change the way we win. And if you really think about it, that's what you got to do at home. You got to change the way you do things of when you go outside of your home, things are going to bother you. Things aren't going to affect the way you, you think, or they're not going to affect the way you do things. And one uh, quote I wanted to read to you was, was this by this man named Stephen Furtick. He says, the reason why we struggle with insecurity is we compare our behind the scenes with everybody else's highlight reel. And we, we see, oh, I did all this and all that. And you see these kids, and, I, and I, I'm around kids all the time lately, and I'm seeing them pave the way for the future and you see him oh man he ran this and he 
jumped, you know, through tackle and made a tackle that. And I can only think and I can only say because I don't do that anymore, I can only lean on my past and say, I, I've done that. Or I've made tackles like that. You know? <laughs> and a lot of times we take those things and we try to sit there and share with somebody else how to change their life. How to change their thought process about God, you know, or their thought process about believing in Christ and accepting Him into their life. And you can't do that. You only use that to do what? Teachers use the past <coughs> to show the, to them how to live in the future. But the thing about it is, when, you have, when you're at school and the teacher's talking to you about certain things, you don't see what happens when they go home. Here, it's different. You can you can look on my Facebook right now and see what how I am, who I am, what I am. Because <laughs> sometimes we put things out there. Sometimes we put more than we need to, you know. Or you you the way you walk around and and talk, the way you walk around and and discipline your children, or the way you just do things. That, that's right there is what people see. They don't look at you and say, oh man, he's a good man, because back then, 10 years ago, when he was at Faith Outreach, or he was at you know Holy Family, they did this and that. No, people don't say that. They say he's a good man of God, he's a good, she's a good woman of God, because they know who you are at that moment, you know? And I want to tell you that it was, took a long time, all this time, I, I've been hearing the word, jotting things down and writing things down, and it took a long time for me to decide I'm ready to come back. You know, and he sit there and, and you know, I'm like waiting for Larry to call, you know. He's waiting for me to call. Mike's like, you guys got to talk. You guys are the two main guys. Yeah. But, you know, and when we do, we always have awesome conversations. But it's, it's like talking to a friend that you can talk. You don't have to talk to him for a long time. But when you do, you pick up where you left off or nothing changes because you know that person. Not about what their past. Larry can tell me has told me many times he was at this church, that church, that church. I don't even remember the name because it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is what he's doing now, and that's the way your children should see what you're doing. They don't know your past. Sometimes our kids are like, "Man, how did y'all do it without?" You know, back then you didn't have cars, and I'm like, dang, I'm just, I'm barely 35. No cell phones. Yeah. I was like, you can't even ask your grandparents like that because they were cars in, <laughs> you know? And they have a, you have a perception that's not right because they see you at that moment. They don't see you. When they look at you, they don't see your past. They see you at that moment. So why <coughs> are we here? Why are you here? Because you made a choice. At home, you made a choice when you were, I'm going to get ready for church tomorrow. What do I got to do tomorrow? What do I got to do tomorrow? I got to go to church. You know, you made that choice. Your kids see that choice. Your friends see that choice. Your family sees that choice. They see that. But I want to ask you some another thing. When you're away from here, do they see that choice? You know? Whether you're at work, whether you're at school, do they see that choice? You know? And I can say those two things because Tanya is at school and she's at work. You know? So that I see those choices in your life. When they see your kids, do they see the choices that you made in their lives? You know? And you can really look at it and say, yeah, they yeah, have. They see some of these things that they do. You know? But 
What? Think about it. Why did you come here? Why? Pick Pastor Rick Warren, he said, change always starts in your mind. The way you feel and the way you feel influences the way you act. And that one script, that uh, same ties into Jeremiah 29, 11. Let me read it real quick, wherever you can turn there. It's in the Old Testament. <coughs> you can see I'm using this other one because I haven't found the one I like yet. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Change always starts in your mind, the way you feel, and the way you feel influences the way you act. Not wearing a tie and everything today, and I've always wanted, I always like wearing this stuff, but I always feel uncomfortable because it feels kind of tight around the neck. I can never find the right shirt. If I find a, if one that fits then down here, it's way big, <laughs> you know? And and it's hard to find a shirt for me. I may have a 20 inch neck, you know? And, oh no, I've lost some weight, so I'm down to 19 and a half. <laughs> but, <laughs> But it's those little things there, they shouldn't affect, they shouldn't have an influence on what you do. Right. You know, I, um, I'm always a person that watches people, you know, and I learn a lot through what I see and what you do. And uh, seeing a praise and worship team and them doing their thing is an awesome thing. But when I see the praise and worship team and, and I'm just, my personal opinion, Miss Jen, you always bring a light to it because I see the joy that you have up here and you're singing and you're smiling and I just want to thank you for sharing that yeah. that experience that you have up here because it has to be a personal one. It has to be something that you want to do. And whether you know things are happening in your life and what choices what those things are going to influence what choices you make and I want you to, to really think about when you're at home and the choices that you make if you're going to start putting God first in your life you know you got to start acting them because obviously you're thinking about it the change starts in your mind and if you're thinking about it and you want God to bless you not just physically or anything like that bless you in your life to where you have a comfort, you have a, 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 a knowledge that things are going to pass. You know, you have to start changing. And, and um, there's one scripture that's repeated over and over. And if you can turn to Habakkuk 2 4 in the Old Testament, and God really, really tries to hammer this one home. Get some get that guy some water over there. What is it, Isaiah? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. That's right at the end of the Old Testament. Two four. And it talks about the righteous man and it talks about the unrighteous man in this section. <clears throat> It says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. 
<clears throat> you have bills that, that are going up, you have a job that seems bleak and you're dealing with people, you have yeah. you know, all those things. <clears throat> God says right there that the just will live by faith. And he says it three more times in the New Testament. And you can write it down if you want. It's Romans 1 17, Galatians 3 11, and Hebrews 10 38. I'm going to turn to Romans 1 17 and read that one. It says, For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. That is, that is, that is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And like I said, I struggled these last few months coming to reestablish my faith in God. Or not really my faith in God, but my worthiness. You know, because I I didn't feel that I didn't have that. And like I said, I was looking in the mirror and I was looking at myself and seeing this image, and I remembered myself. I remembered to myself, I am the righteousness of God, as you each of you are. <clears throat> And in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, anyone in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. That you are new. You are already made new. And in 5.21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And you see that scripture and you think to yourself, I'm the righteousness of God. Yes, you are. But he says there, might become. Because it's a choice. It's a choice to, you see somebody on the side of the road and they're asking for something. It's a choice to give them something. You see your 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 child has done everything you're supposed to do and a circumstance happens and you provide and, and it, it's threatening to take away that and it all boils down to a choice you make, yes or no, and you say yes because he deserves it yeah. or yes, she deserves it and that's a choice and people don't think about those things. They think it's all, it's, it's, it's small, it's minute but the thing is is that God uses those things because you're living right now. You're, you're setting a legacy right now, Amen. you know, and you and and I remember uh, and one good uh, thing that I want to share with you is that when uh, seeing my nephew Brandon had spoke about his parents and he spoke about his dad and thanking him for all the things that he did for him, you know, after coming in from the hot sun and doing all those things, he worked all day in the hot sun, doing all the work he did, but still made time to talk to him about God. First and foremost, to practice with him, to do all those other things, all those little things that are minute. As a, you know, it might, you might think as a dad it's small because you send them and they get coached by somebody. They're not small. They're important. Very important. And God is telling you that these choices are important. You might, you know, might only because it's a choice you make. And if you don't, then what happens? Are you out of alignment of God? Or are you still in alignment with God? I think if you don't, that you're out of alignment with God. Because that's a choice too. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do to make sure Gabriel becomes a man of God, then I'm out of alignment. 
with God because he was put in my hands. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's the way I see it. So if you see me now talking to him and I whisper things into his ear and I'm doing those things, that's because I'm trying to share my standard with him, which is God's standard. You know? <clears throat> And when I decided to make that choice, I felt revitalized, I felt fresh, you know. Tanya's like, how do you feel? I feel, I feel good. I feel weight lifted off of my shoulders. Good. Because I put it there. You know, nobody else did. I allowed it to happen. So now I'm past that might part where I am the righteousness of God. And that that should be a case for you. You should be the just look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am the righteousness of God because I'm past that might part. And you know what? Because I'm doing it as a parent or authority in my house, the kids are going to see it. And they're going to live like that. They're going to start saying, oh, we get down to eat and we're somewhere else at somebody else's house or in the middle of a restaurant. Oh, wait, 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 we need to pray. You know? Because now they're starting to make that choice at that moment you know what I'm saying or they start talking to friends and their friends start doing stuff and they're like no, no no you can't do that you need to take it to God you know what you should pray about it you should do this or that you know and that's ultimately what you want because you're preparing them for the world you know And that choice right there is you bringing God back into the home. A launching pad. Your home should be your launching pad. That's the first church you have. Yeah. You know? Think about some of the choices that we've, you've been making over these, this period of time that before you got here. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to look at that and I want you to forget about it. Forget about it. And from this moment right now, I'm going to ask that you, you look at this book and, it, and you look in, in the book of life and see your name written in it. <clears throat> in Romans 3.23 it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have made mistakes. <laughs> And I don't hold it against you. And God's not going to hold it against you either. In Romans 6, 23, it's for the wages of sin is death. And I want you to understand that whenever you are doing, being out of alignment and you're further, further walking away from God that you put yourself in jeopardy of living without Him forever. And Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I'm giving you that opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart because God said that you can't get to him but through Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's an undeniable, uh, uh, undeniable route. <coughs> There is no roadblock when you say, Christ, I have sinned. Forgive me. I thank you for shedding your blood on the cross. In Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. You have peace. You have peace in your life. The turmoil that you feel, this inner fight is no longer there. In Romans 8, 38 and 39, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels and demons, 
either prevent <coughs> nor powers nor things present nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the Lord of the love of God which in Christ Jesus our Lord I want you to close your eyes and I want you to repeat by saying it Lord God thank you for shedding your blood on Calvary Jesus I thank you for shedding your blood and I'm not worthy to accept it but you paid the price of death for me to live for me to live I thank you, Father God. Praise you in holy name, Father God.